Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. My name is Roger Bissessa, and I would like to welcome you to our program, Our Islam, Peace, Not Hostility. This is a program of the Ahmadiyya Anjum and Ishati Islam Incorporated of Trinidad and Tobago, an organization that promotes a peaceful Islam, a tolerant Islam, and intelligent Islam. The mission of the Ahmadiyya Anjum and Ishati Islam Incorporated is to promote the pristine Islam as taught by the Holy Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace. On behalf of this organization, we are pleased to present to you a better Islam. Our presenter for today's program is Maulana Mustafa Kemal Haidal, religious head and missionary of the Ahmadiyya Anjuman Ishati Islam Incorporated. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَلَقَدْ بَأَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ اِعْبَدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ التَّغُوتِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ حَدَ اللَّهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ حَقَّتْ عَلَيْهِ الدَّلَالَةِ فَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْزُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ آقِبَةُ الْمُقَذِّبِينَ صدق الله العلي اللزيم وَسَرَكَ رَسُولُهُ النَّبِيُّ الْكَرِيمُ وَنَهْنُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Most surely, we have raised up among every nation a messenger. Serve Allah and reject the devil. But among them are those whom Allah guided, and among them are those whom the wrong path just swept them away. Travel around the world, and you will see what happened to those who opposed the truth. The Quran, chapter 16, verse 36. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I also bear witness that Muhammad is the last and final messenger of Allah, after whom no prophet old or new will come. I begin in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the merciful. Salam alaikum, peace be unto you. I am Maulana Mustafa Haidal of the Ahmadiyya Anjuman Ishati Islam, which means the Ahmadiyya Organization for the Propagation of Islam. Ahmadiyya is derived from the honored name of the Prophet of Islam, as found in chapter 61, verse 6 of the Quran. On behalf of this non-sectarian organization, I am pleased to present to you a better Islam. Our Islam is peace, not hostility. We live in a time when we no longer receive news. We receive instead opinions. News is no longer information that allows us to think for ourselves to make our own judgments and to form our own conclusions. News is now presented as balanced when two opposing interpretations of an event or an issue are presented by a panel. It leaves us more confused than educated. Sometimes what is discussed and debated later turns out to be fake news. Whereas we should use the media to be informed, the media now uses us to present biased or so-called balanced information. The question arises, do we use the media or does the media use us? Are we addicted to all forms of media, especially social media, such that we deny ourselves the opportunity and the exercise of thinking for ourselves? The, challenging, the challenge of conveying information has always existed. The Prophet Muhammad overcame this challenge with the first revelation which was Ikra bismi rabbika allazi khalaq Read for yourself, acquire your own knowledge, but let it always focus on the attributes of the divine being Allah. 
It is very difficult to convey the concept of God to people who are illiterate, who know nothing about language, and who know nothing about reading and learning and the development of higher concepts and ideas. Muhammad is an exception in that he was the most illiterate prophet, living among the most uneducated and corrupt people on earth. Yet, he was able to give the world a clear, convincing, intelligible, and rational concept of the divine being, Allah. Before Muhammad, it was difficult to convey the concept of God to people. We ourselves find difficulty even today in explaining God to a child. Can a person represent their concept of God in some way? In a book, in a drawing, in writing, or through some other medium? How can you present God and say what it is you believe about God? The Quran uses the imagery of dipping cloth in colorful dyes when it says, Sibgat Allah, chapter 2, verse 138. Other religions interpret and call this expression Sibgat Allah, baptism, or a ritual bath in a pond or river, or being sprinkled with colored liquid or colored powder to purify a person from sin when they immerse themselves in the worship of God. Messengers of God who knew and understood the nature of the divine being gave religion to the world. Others came after them and who did not know the truth. They controlled people through religion by keeping them in ignorance. But until the majority of human beings could develop the power to think for themselves through the pursuit of knowledge, learning and wisdom, the prophets of God and their followers had to use whatever resources they had to convince people of the oneness of God. Huge structures and temples were built that were allegedly devoted to idolatry. In India, there are huge and magnificent temples and mandirs built allegedly for Ram and Krishna or other gods. Some temples, monasteries and churches are built in remote islands or inaccessible mountain areas where they are, or the where they are hard rocks. Why did people in Tibet, in Indonesia, in Africa, in Europe, and even in the Andes, in Mexico, and in Central America, build these huge and magnificent houses of worship? Could idolatry inspire such marvels of skill and engineering? If these were temples of idolatry, why does the Quran forbid the destruction of any of these structures? Mosques, churches, synagogues, and temples, recognizing that Allah's name is often mentioned, uh, they are forbidden to be destroyed, the Quran tells us in chapter 22, verse 40. Compared to these huge structures, there is only one small building, built in ancient times that represents the oneness of God. This is the Kaaba in Mecca. It is known to be the oldest house of worship in the world. The Arabs call it the Baitullah, the house of Allah. It is a cube which occupies just 50 feet by 55 feet. This building also became a house of idol worship even after Abraham, his wife Hagar, and his son Ishmael had discovered its foundations, rebuilt it, and purified it for the worship of one God. Chapter 2, verse 125, and chapter 22, verse 26 of the Quran. The Quran urges us to travel in the world, and you will find that, and I quote, Certainly we raised in every nation a messenger. Chapter 16, verse 36. Allah also informs us in the Quran of a Misakin Nabiyin, a covenant of the prophets. Chapter 3, verse 81. This promise was made by every prophet on behalf of their people. 
that when the last messenger comes, the followers of each prophet will accept him. This subject is well documented in the exhaustive research work Muhammad in World Scriptures, written by the Ahmadiyya author Maulana Abdul Haq Vidyarti. The prophecy of the coming of Muhammad exists in all scriptures. But did any prophet arise in the Western Hemisphere? History has done a disservice to many of the past civilizations because those civilizations were looked at primarily from the biased point of view of those who do not view religion as universal guidance from God. They see religion as wrong and pagan and idolatrous if it is different from theirs. Descendants of these civilizations claim that the historians and the archaeologists did good service by unearthing ancient structures and preserving them and deciphering and translating strange and forgotten languages, but that their interpretation and conclusions about them were biased and wrong. The temple at Chichen Itza in Mexico is a good example of this. The Mayan civilization has a temple in Chichen Itza, which means the well of Itza. Itza is the name of a people. The Mayans claim that the Europeans considered their forefathers as pagans who worshipped idols and had human sacrifices. They deny this. They insist that their forefathers were religious and intelligent people who knew engineering, astronomy, the calendar, and mathematics, and were extremely religious. Their religion centered on the worship of one God. But they had to interpret religion in ways in which unintelligent people could understand. The Mayans were influenced by the powerful energy of the sun, which represented the source of life. Their prophets presented the concept of God by using the effect of the sun. In most scriptures, including the Quran, the sun stands for the light of God, especially the light of truth that is reflected through the personality of the Prophet Muhammad, who, as an inviter to Allah, is called Sirajam Munir, a light given son. Chapter 33, verse 45 and verse 46. In chapter 24, verse 35, Allah is described as the light of the heavens and the earth. And his light, his light is likened to a lamp. It does not mean that when we worship Allah, we worship a lamp. This likeness is a means of conveying the concept of God as radiating the light of truth to the world in a way in which people can understand. The Quran justifies the use of similes, metaphors, and parables as a means of conveying spiritual messages and lessons. Allah tells us that some of the verses of the Quran are symbolic, chapter 3, verse 7, and that Allah is not ashamed to use the parable of a mosquito or anything else, chapter 2, verse 26. The Quran is described as a rope which binds us to our responsibilities to Allah. Chapter 3, verse 103. Allah is himself, or faith in him, is described as a firm handle which does not break. Chapter 2, verse 256. But with all of this, the Quran is called the book with rational arguments provable by what came before it. Chapter 3, verse 2. God also assures us, Surely we have revealed it as an Arabic Quran that you may use reasoning to understand. Chapter 12, verse 2. In many scriptures, the devil is represented by a serpent or a snake, a dragon, or some other horrible or hideous beast. The Quran uses the word for devil, which means serpent or snake, such as shaitan, Satan, in chapter 37, verse 66. Jinn, it uses the word John, that means a snake in chapter 27, verse 11. And it uses the word Hayya, a serpent, in chapter 20, verse 21. 
Almost all religions and many cultures present the battle between good and evil as between a righteous person, a prophet of God, crushing the head of the serpent. The triumph of truth over falsehood is described in the Quran in the chapter entitled The Prophets, chapter 21, as Allah flinging truth against falsehood so that it knocks its brains out and so that it vanishes. Chapter 21, verse 18. Muhammad is foretold by previous prophets through the covenant of the prophets as one who will crush the brains of the serpent. The prophet Jesus assured us in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 26 and 20, 16 and 26, chapter 15, verse 26 and chapter 16, verse 7. The prophet Jesus in this Gospel of John assures us that he will pray to Allah to give us a paraclete. Parakletos is the Greek form of the Aramaic and Arabic expression farikolit, which means the breaker or the crusher of falsehood. The temple in Chichen Itza in Mexico is built in such a way that when the winter ends and spring begins in March, a unique phenomenon occurs. The temple is constructed so that as the sun rises, triangles appear to move along one, side, one of the sides, giving the impression of a serpent. A moving picture is drawn with the sunlight, creating a huge serpent. The sunlight comes down to meet the serpent's head as it nears the sunset. The sunlight recedes and the serpent seems to disappear. Spring is a time of rebirth. And the Quran challenges the statement of those who swear that there will be no rebirth. Chapter 16, verse 37. The previous civilization of the Mayans have died. But the prophecy of the coming of Muhammad is still alive among them, carved in stone. Muhammad is depicted as the light-given sun or the light of truth that descends and comes down from above to destroy the dragon or serpent which represents evil. The Mayans also have a book or books known as Chilam Balam, the prophecies of Balam, who is the prophet to the Itza people. In their scripture, Balam prophesizes the coming of a prophet. He says, O Itza, your worship is of no avail with the true God who has descended. It is false in word and teaching. Who would be the prophet who would understand it when he, come, he came to Chichen Itza. The temple at Chichen Itza has another peculiar feature, that if you stand at the base on the eastern side and clap your hand, the sound of your clapping will echo back. But if you stand at the base on the northern side, when the hands are clapped, the echo that is heard is different. It is the sound of a bird, which the Mayans believe represents the, the voice of God. It is explained that the illiterate people challenged the prophet who claimed to have heard the voice of God, saying, you have heard the voice of God, but we have not heard it. The temple was therefore constructed to show to the uneducated people that you too can hear the voice of God if you use your hands in the proper way. Much of what is considered idolatry has arisen because of this bias of the biased opinions and wrong conceptions of those who researched other religious systems with the prejudice of their own religion. Muhammad gave us the Quran as the word of God, which is a guidance to all human beings, which, rep which presents clear proofs of the guidance and which is a gauge to determine truth from falsehood. Chapter 2, verse 185. Whereas previous prophets all over the world had great difficulty and challenges in presenting and explaining the concept of God to uneducated and naive minds, elaborate structures and symbols were used not only to convey belief in the oneness of God, but also to indicate that the last prophet will come who will make the concept of God much easier for people to understand and to benefit from it. It is for this reason that the Quran requires us to accept the previous scriptures, chapter 2, verse 4, recognize the previous prophets, chapter 2, verse 285, and protect the temples where Allah's name is still being heard, 
chapter 22, verse 40. Even though it is well known that as time went by, much of what the prophets taught were corrupted and changed and falsified from the original teachings, two truths still exist in all religions. Firstly, there is one God. Secondly, the Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet whose teachings will cause the religion of truth to predominate. Chapter 9, verse 33 of the Quran, chapter 48, verse 28, and chapter 61, verse 9, indicates this. Truth can save us from sin, not faith systems that offer through rituals and beliefs an escape from the responsibility of our sins and bad behavior. Religion is dead when it does not make the individual a better human being. As Allah, through the Prophet Muhammad, with the Quran and Islam, brought forth truth at a time when the world was most corrupt, so too, in spite of the failure of religions to enhance and develop human personality and bring peace to the world, Allah will bring all religions to life once again with the truth as presented in a better Islam. The members of the Ahmadiyya movement assures the people of the world that our Islam is peace, not hostility. And in accordance with the prophecy of Muhammad, the son of Islam will rise in the West. A better Islam can be found in the wisdom of the Quran. Obtain a copy of the Quran, read it for yourself, use your own intelligence and you will agree that of all the religions prevalent in the world, Islam is a religion which is free from error and terror. Let us adopt the principles and systems of Islam. They have worked in the past to create a better human being and a new understanding of them will ensure they work in the present and in the future. Islam works to bring about harmony among all human beings. The Ahmadiyya Anjuman looks forward to you joining us again as we share our thoughts on a better Islam. Salaamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'na wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikr al-Hakim innahu ta'ala jawadun kareem malikun barru rawfur rahim. Alhamdulillahi na'hmadu wa nasta'inahu wa nasta'gfirhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'uzu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina may yahdihi allahu falamudilla lahu wa may yirlilhu falahadiya lah wa nashadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasoolah اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعلنا منهم اللهم اغزل من خزل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك الله محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمر بالأرض والإحسان ويتاء سلقربا وينها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون إباد الله يذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يسجب لكم ولا ذكر الله على أكبر Assalamu alaikum. My name is Kabir Bisasa and I will be reading sections 1 and 2 of chapter 31 of the Holy Quran. A'uzu billahi min ash rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I, Allah, am the best knower. These are the verses of the Book of Wisdom. A guidance and a mercy for the doers of good, who keep up prayer and pay the poor rate and who are certain of the hereafter. These are on a guidance from their Lord, and these are they who are successful. And of men is he 
who takes instead frivolous discourse to lead us astray from Allah's path without knowledge and to make it a mockery. For such is an abasing chastisement. And when our messages are recited to him, he turns back proudly, as if he had not heard them, as if there were deafness in his ears. So announce to him a painful chastisement. Those who believe and do good, for them are gardens of bliss. To abide therein, a promise of Allah in truth, and he is the mighty, the wise. He created the heavens without pillars that you see, and cast mountains on the earth, lest it should be convulsed with you. And he spread on it animals of every kind. And we send down water from the clouds, then cause to grow therein of every noble kind. This is Allah's creation. Now show me that of those which besides him have created. Nay, the unjust are in manifest error. And certainly we gave Luqman wisdom, saying, Give thanks to Allah, and whoever is thankful is thankful for his own soul. And whoever denies, then surely Allah is self-sufficient, praised. And when Luqman said to his son, while he admonished him, O my son, ascribe no partner to Allah. Surely ascribing partners to him is a grievous iniquity. And we have enjoined on man concerning his parents. His mother bears him with faintings upon faintings, and his weaning takes two years, saying, Give thanks to me and to thy parents. To me is the eventual coming. And if they strive with thee to make thee associate with me that of which thou hast no knowledge, obey them not, and keep kindly company with them in this will, and follow the way of him who turns to me. Then to me is your return. Then I shall inform you of what you did. O my son, even if it be the weight of a grain of mustard seed, even though it be in a rock, or in the heaven or in the earth, Allah will bring it forth. Surely Allah is knower of subtleties, aware. O my son, keep up prayer, and enjoin good and forbid evil, and bear patiently that which befalls thee. Surely this is an affair of great resolution. And turn not thy face away from people in contempt, nor go about in the land exultingly. Surely Allah loves not any self-conceited boaster. And pursue the right course in thy going about, and lower thy voice. Surely the most hateful of voices is the braying of donkeys. Amen. Thank you for viewing. Join us again next Friday at 1.30 p.m. as we present another Jummah Qutbah promoting our Islam, peace, not hostility. This program was brought to you by the Ahmadiyya Anjuman Ishati Islam Incorporated of Trinidad and Tobago. Assalamu alaikum.